So moved. Mayor Bowen. Mr. Beatty. Um, all in favor of postpone or excuse me, amending the agenda to move up the uh, Bluffview Park Trail to first thing on our agenda for tonight. You can do that by a voice vote. Aye. Are we all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we will move that up then. And that will be the first item of business tonight. Mr. Boonich. Madam Chair, we'll see if Mr. Newberry has any speaker card. Oh, that's, excuse me. You're right. First speaker card for the public comment session is Mr. Adams. Please state your name and address, please. Sorry. <laughs> My name is Brian Adams. Uh, I live at 3371 Johns Cabin Road, uh, 63038. Uh, I am a uh, Gork, uh, which is the Gateway Off-Road Cyclist uh, board member. And uh, I just wanted to give you guys, if you're not familiar with Gork, uh, a little bit of background on us and the proposal that, we're, uh, that we have before you. But uh, the Gateway Off-Road Cyclist was, uh, was formed in 1998. Uh, we are a 501c3 corporation. Uh, we came about because St. Charles County had a need to build a trail in Matson Hill Park. Uh, they didn't have anybody to, to build that trail, they didn't have the expertise, so they sought out a volunteer group to, uh, to build that particular trail. And, and since then, we've expanded to most of the land manager uh, parks uh, in the area. Uh, we've built um, a number of trails in that time, but uh, we have 630 members in our, in our club. Uh, we are all volunteers. Um, not all bikers. The name Gateway Off-Road Cyclist kind of leads you to, to mountain bikers, but uh, we have a lot of runners, a lot of hikers um, that belong to the group and come out and volunteer their time. Uh, we, people like me, move to Wildwood for your parks and the, and the trails and, and things we have here, move from the city out here to get closer to that stuff. Um, we are a group that's just dedicated to providing leadership where it was needed to design, build, and maintain uh, natural surface trails in the area. So um, we as a group donate about 5,000 hours a year to, to build trail. Um, in our 21 years, since 1998, we've volunteered over 96,000 hours, which equates to about $2.3 million in in-kind donation. Um, we've constructed 97 miles of trail uh, in 21 different parks uh, and uh, public lands in, in the St. Louis region. Uh, the Bluffview project was one that we partnered with St. Louis County and Wildwood on. Uh, we started that back in 2009 and um, completed the loop in 2018. Uh, that's nine miles of trail. It took us uh, over 10,000 hours there, so 230, $240,000 in kind donation just uh, by the Gateway Off Road Cyclists in there. And, um, you know, we, we are currently managing projects in Greensfelder, Cliff Cave Park, uh, Matson, uh, the Re Eureka Timbers has is, is got a project going on. So we are an active organization with a long history of, of completing many projects. Uh, and uh, continuing that work. So the Bluffview proposal is, is an addition to what's already there. Um, we are looking to enhance the current recreational opportunities without impacting Wildwood's budget, staff, or uh, limiting the environmental impact to that park. Uh, our goal is to create a progressive environment for off-road cyclists of any skill level. Uh, to enjoy mountain biking and develop his or her skill by adding three distinct features uh, or facilities which are listed in the in the plan. A family trail that will introduce new riders to mountain biking. Uh, we're looking to, to bring all skill levels out and teach them what will, they will find out on the trail on that other nine miles of trail that's there. Um, 
a skills area where they can increase their skills, balance, handling, jumping, turning. Um, it would include like a small strider track, which is just a, a very, would fit in this room just for little kids that don't even have pedals on, just to, to, to uh, like a little mini pump track uh, to, to uh, start the process of getting out on bikes. And then um, it also creates an environment for families to gather. Uh, you've got a great uh, parking lot up there um, that invites people to come out and use that park. Uh, we see that, that whole area where we're proposing the trails as being a gathering place for, for families. Um, and then the final component is the directional flow trail that would... Um, it would have features on it that, that we plan on introducing on the family trail and the skills area. It's small berms, rollers, um, to create, it's kind of a roller coaster in the woods uh, feel to it where you don't have to pedal very much uh, and, or break. Uh, where we use the natural terrain as much as possible. Um, but this, this will also separate the bicycles from the trail users on the heavily used section that is between the parking lot and the bluff. That's kind of one of the uh, the things that we've noticed is that um, there's a lot of traffic on that section, and we have interactions between all the user groups. So this trail would be a biking only trail down, and the cyclists could only come up the the old trail, which would eliminate a lot of uh, potential conflicts. So we believe these trail facilities uh, will enhance Bluffview Park and, and encourage family activities that promote an active lifestyle and a sense of community. Um, you've got the opportunity to add something really cool to that park, so uh, thank you for considering. Ms. Hausman. Good evening. My name is Lara Hausman, and I reside at 670 Shadow Ridge Drive, 63011. And I am here today to speak as well about the Bluffview Project, mostly as a mom and a cyclist myself. So very similar to what Brian was saying, um, I have a five-year-old son who is an active cyclist, just like my husband and myself, and he only rides 12-inch wheels. So he has very tiny little wheels that he rides, and he's been riding a strider bike all the way up to now a pedal bike. And we're trying to teach him safety and how to really well ride trails. Um, first of all, because we love to do it as a family and for his own health and fun. And unfortunately right now, he's not quite old enough to get through a lot of the trails, so he can't go quite as far as many of us want to be able to take him. Um, so we frequent Bluffview Trail very often, and uh, we actually celebrated my husband's 40th birthday there, and we sat at the top, and we had um, all the cyclists hit the trails, and it would be really cool to have that type of environment that my son and we would all be able to take turns. So if we had the skills assessment or skills park at the top, my son could practice all of his skills and grow into the trail. While my husband is off doing his trail, then I could take my turn and go hit Bluffview and Zombie while William gets to develop his skills. So we very much look forward to this project going forward. Like Paul said, or excuse me, Brian said, it is completely volunteer-based, um, and we are very passionate about what we do. Um, so we would just ask that you would consider for safety purposes as well as for developmental purposes for our kids to be able to grow into the trails and use the assets that we have available to us. Thank you. Mr. Powell. Hello, my name is Jeff Powell. I live at 11 Windjammer Court here in Wildwood. I've been here since before Wildwood existed. Happy to say that I'm also a Rockwood PE teacher just down the road at Fairway Elementary. Uh, I was at Pond before that, so I've been around quite a while. Taught a lot of kids. I am obviously a very big proponent of getting our kids out and about and finding ways to stay active. Um, and with these trails being built around here, I'm seeing more and more kids ride. I also like to travel to other states to go riding, and I see what other cities are bringing in 
Arkansas, Colorado, um, other places that have been in the excitement in the kids when they're out there. I'm starting to see more families riding all the time. I'm seeing schools bring uh, mountain biking into their PE programs, which I'm going to hopefully get around to. I hear there's a new program out there that I'm planning to apply for. I'm also a local mountain bike instructor. I've been doing that through Parkway Rockwood Community Education Program for over 10 years now, and it just keeps growing. It went from three kids, now we have served over 100 kids in our programs. Um, we've actually turned our group into a company because it's gotten so popular with the kids around here and the re request to do more teaching with the kids. Um, so the opportunity is there. We need trails that the kids can handle more of. Our trails around here are pretty good. I mean, they're actually really good. They're higher level. They're really designed more for the uh, intermediate to advanced cyclists that live around here and come to our area to ride. But the kids, it's harder on them when I take them out there. They don't have the muscle power to get up the trails. And what Gork is proposing to build, which I'm, I'll be there to help do, um, is right in line with where I'm taking these kids right now. And it'd be great if you guys would allow us to do that for you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Teacher in Mizi tells me to ask you that. So. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Molesky. Hi, my name is Chris Molesky. I'm at 17100 Centaur Station Drive. I've been a Wildwood resident for 17 years now. So I'm here representing um, the Missouri Interscholastic Cycling Association. For those of you who don't know what the Missouri Interscholastic Cycling Association is, um, it's a not-for-profit that uses the mountain bike as a tool. So it is the Missouri chapter of the National Interscholastic Cycling Association, or commonly called NICA. And what NICA's mission is, is to put mountain biking in all middle school and high schools across the United States. So currently there's 31 leagues in 30 states. California actually has two leagues the NorCal League and the SoCal League. Uh, I was the head coach at Lindenwood University, the cycling coach for seven years. I left there in 2016 to lead the NICA project for Missouri. Um, took about two years to solidify our bid. I led a, a team of 18 others, um, and we landed that project in 2018 in the fall. So starting this fall, we're gonna have six race events all across our state. Um, again, we're all non -for it's not for profit so we're all volunteers, all the coaches, all the league staff, uh, right now, Nike is projecting we're going to have 125 coaches statewide, um, well over 40, they estimate between 46 and 60 teams all across our state, including here in, in Wildwood, which is where Nike will be headquartered. Um, so obviously, we, we want to see the, the project passed as well. We're going to have a lot of coaches, a lot of kids that are new to the sport. You know, one of our core values is we're inclusive. So if an individual wants to come out, the youth wants to come out, the league is grade 6 through 12, and they want to ride, we'll get them a bike and they can participate in the league. So not only are you going to get the more experienced kids, but you're also going to get those beginning student athletes that may have become disenfranchised with team sports or, or not participating in any activity. So the Bluffy Project will definitely add to that. You'll see kids practicing, you'll see kids out there. Um, a couple of interesting stats. So with NICA leagues right now, they're experiencing 48% year-over-year growth. So we're anticipating anywhere from 450 to 600 student athletes for us uh, year one. We're going to see that begin to grow exponentially within the first few years. So I'm um, really excited about, about that particular project. The last stat I'd like to throw out is that 74% of NICA student athletes, either one or both parents, go out and buy brand new bikes. So you're really seeing that community feel with our NICA leagues. Um, once you get a student athlete participating, a lot of times you're getting both parents or maybe a sibling go out and buying new bikes and start to utilize the facilities as well. So thank you for your time and consideration on this project. Mr. Holtman. Hello, my name is Todd Holtman, Wildwood resident, 17062 Cambury Lane. My wife and I moved to Wildwood about three years ago uh, for the trails, for the parks, for the vision of Wildwood. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to come up and, and talk to, to you guys about this trail. <clears throat> We're excited about it for many of the reasons that you've heard already. So I'm not going to repeat all of those, but uh, you know, I'll add that I am one of those volunteers that go out there and, and help not only build, but maintain the trails. So have a vested interest in not only building them, but maintaining them. 
But the really unique thing I think that I want to add to this conversation about these trails are, and I don't know how many have you been been on these types of trails or specifically the Bluffy Trail, but you know you can you can especially a younger kid can leave if they're brave enough and to ride by themselves uh, at a young age and go out there. They could be out there for hours, right? And just on the trails, having a great time, doing well, but nobody knows where they are, right? Um, the new things about these trails are they really provide a a, a viewable opportunity for a parent, for families to go out there and see their young ones enjoy these trails in a very viewable format, not just out in the woods somewhere for a couple hours and then coming back. So these types of trails, whether it's the pump track or the stride track or the flow trail, really allow that opportunity for better viewing from parents and families, spend more quality time out in the woods enjoying the trails, but not being so, not being so separated. And I think that's a really unique opportunity, and that's what we're seeing when we go down to Arkansas, when we go to Colorado, like I mentioned, other places as well, we just uh, were in Phoenix this weekend, and and my wife and I were talking about this meeting and and you know what we could say to really try and help you know demonstrate the value of this. And we drove by one such park just outside of Phoenix, and there were families there, there were cars, there were tents set up, there were kids, really just having a family day at the park. And it's a really kind of click with me is that they're able to be out there and enjoy these trails but not have to be a mile from the car or two miles or seven miles from their car. They're right there by the parking lot. So they have their refreshments, can really kind of create that family picnic environment, enjoying the trails without having to be really truly out in the woods, but they're still out in nature. And that's really the value that I see in a, in a trail system like this. So thank you very much. Mr. Keppel. Thank you very much for letting us come up this evening. So my name is Paul Keppel, and I live at 18615 Hart Road. And I've lived there for just a little over 30 years, in fact, before Wildwood existed. And I would say one of the main reasons why I moved to my house was easy access to outdoor activity. And it's great to be able to say that since Wildwood was incorporated, uh, because of other boards and commissions like yourself, we have a lot more outdoor activities than what we did 30 years ago. Um, I think it's the main reason, or one of the reasons, why people still move to our community. We know we have friends that moved here because they want to be close to the Bluffview Trails. So, and if you ask people in surrounding communities, right, to describe Wildwood, outdoor activities always comes up in that description. Um, being on a commission like this, I'm sure that you have um, become accustomed to people who stand up here and say, I want, I want, I want, and what they really expect is that somehow you're going to magically make all of this appear, you know. Um, I've been involved with Gork now since 2008, and we do things a little bit differently, right? We really take our time and study a particular need, a particular park, and we develop a really well thought through plan, and we bring that plan to a city, and we offer to build it, and we offer to maintain it through our network of volunteers. I mean, it's really community involvement at its very finest. Um, you know, as these guys said, they all spoke here tonight. They were up speaking. They travel the country, and they're having fun out mountain biking, hiking, um, trail running as they travel the country. But while they're there, they also start studying these other communities. And what are they building in these communities? Why are they building it? Who's benefiting from it? We take all of that information, and we use all that information as we build these plans that you'll see here tonight. One of the things we're really, you know, that they touched on is we're really trying to enhance Bluffview Park. Today what happens is mom or dad show up by themselves. They go for a ride. They love that ride. They love the trail. But they're by themselves and they go back home afterward, right? We want to change that whole um, dynamic of that park, right? We want to enhance it. We want mom and dad to show up with their children. And we want them to spend the afternoon at this facility. You know, we want to build a park that really introduces the outdoors to the youth of our community at a really young age and allow them to have facilities that will keep them interested as they grow. Um, you might know that Eureka and St. Charles, Webster Grove has a pump track as well, right? Several other cities are kind of looking at this concept. But Wildwood has something really unique that none of these other cities are going to have. And that is the Al Foster Trail. And it's the interconnectivity, right? You come down the Bluffview Trail with the Al Foster, you can interconnect all the way over to Castlewood. You can interconnect over to Greensfelder. I mean, it's just a beautiful setting 
of these interconnecting trails that allow you to have miles of trails. And there's no, really no other city that's going to have that same type of facility. The Bluffview Trail System, you may know, was voted as the best trail within the St. Louis area by the readers of Terrain Magazine. And when you look at the number of users that are using that trail, you can see that St. Louis County, Wildwood, Gork, we did something right. Everybody loves this trail, right? So St. Louis County Parks, Wildwood, and Gork have had this amazing relationship since 2008 when we first started designing the Bluffview Trail, building it, and now we maintain the Bluffview Trail as well. We're simply asking to continue that relationship and enhance that same relationship that we've had for the past 12 years. We're asking for your support tonight to allow us to build these facilities inside the Bluffview Park. Thank you. Mr. Hudson. David Hudson, 18068 Babbler Woods Road, 63005. Uh, Bluffview sounds great. Um, this is not about that. This is about PZ 1-20, um, the updating of the municipal codes uh, ordinances. And uh, as part of that, I would request that the tree, Wildwood Tree Manual be converted from a scanned, typewritten document with handwritten notes to a text-searchable PDF, as does all the other documents in Wildwood these days. It was printed in uh, 1996 and hasn't been converted to a, uh, a searchable document, and it's less valuable that way. There are many things, many interesting things in that document that most people probably aren't aware of because they can't search for something that they're interested in. That's all. Thank you. I have, uh, no more speaker cards. Madam Chair, with your permission, I'll have Mr. Newberry read the request into the record. A recommendation report for the planned trail and other improvements at Bluffview Park in conjunction with Gateway Off-Road Cyclist Gork, which will allow for different uses within the 99-acre public space area, PS Park and Scenic, and Scenic District, south side of Old State Road, east of State Route 109, street address 1900 Old State Road, St. Louis County, locator number 26U430012, supporting the granting of rights for the, these purposes to this private not-for-profit organization, Ward 6. Mr. Brunich. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, the department has prepared for your consideration tonight a draft report relating to an amended site development plan for the installation of a series of trails in Bluffview Park. Bluffview Park is owned by St. Louis County, but the city of Wildwood has a lease with St. Louis County for the property. The City of Wildwood instituted the first of the development programs for the park by installing the access area, the drive aisles, the parking area, and then certain other facilities in association with it. Since that time, a natural surface trail has been installed as represented on the graphic that's on your monitors as well as being projected behind the dais. It is a popular trail and certainly adds an additional area for all users, whether walkers, runners, hikers, bicyclists, or equestrian. The Department of Planning has been working with Gateway Off-Road Cyclists along with St. Louis County on the development of the three components that have been described tonight and are represented in the recommendation report. The pump track, the skills course, and the family trail area are the three components. Those components are represented on the amended site development plan. 
and reflect, I think, care in placement as well as achieving the goals that are sought by the mountain, bike, mountain bicyclist and their association. I think it is important to note that in reviewing the information, the department has determined through past practices of gateway off-road cyclists that many of the mature trees that are in the vicinity of these improvements will be retained. They, meaning Gork, gateway off-road cyclists are capable of working the trails around those mature trees and preserving them for not only aesthetic benefits, but stormwater management and environmental quality. The three components will add something that does not exist in this portion of West St. Louis County, and it will do it in a area that is very scenic and already established for recreational purposes. Therefore, tonight the department has prepared this recommendation report with a requested favorable action by the commission. That favorable action hopefully will be premised on the seven reasons the department has identified in the draft report for consideration. I think key amongst those is that this is an extension of an effort that was begun back in 2006 with the adoption of the Parks and Recreation Action Plan that not only saw the addition of new trails for all users, but also partnerships with other organizations to expand what the City of Wild can, Wildwood can accomplish in a lesser amount of time. Therefore, Madam Chair and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, the Department is presenting its draft recommendation report for your consideration tonight. Mr. Newberry, Mr. Young, and I are available for any questions or comments, and thank you for your attention. We have a motion to discuss or a motion to accept the recommendation. Well, I think I'm going to make a motion, Madam okay. Chairman, but I just want to make uh, one point of clarification for those in the audience and, and anyone watching. Um, it's it's not in the report, but it is, it can, I didn't see it at least, but it is contained in the material presented by this organization that they will be paying for the, the construction of this. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, sir. I think I identified, hopefully, somewhere in the report. Well, that's um, okay. I may have missed it. but No, that, that's fine. But yes, the intent is to have the volunteer organization uh, actually construct the trail components, the three, and also they do maintenance in almost all instances. Right. There are times that the City of Wildwood is asked to assist, and there are occasions when we are required to provide maintenance, but all in all, it is a relationship so far to date that has been in the best interest of our taxpayers. And I just ask that because we have a lot of residents that obviously are concerned about cost of, of new things and, and uh, so forth. So I would make the motion that the uh, uh, the amended site plan, site development plan be amended to allow for this. And as a point of per personal privilege, just thank all of you for what you're doing here. Ms. Alfred? Second. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Mr. Councilmember Mr. Member Warther. Mr. Vunich, from the department standpoint, I know um, Mr. Brown's here as well. Uh, over the f few years that Bluffview's been open, we've envisioned it originally as a mixed-use trail. People, cyclist, equestrian. And I know early on we had some co early conflicts. Have those, for the most part, seemed to wane, or do we ever run into those anymore? I suspect, Mr. Werther, that there are still an occasional conflict, even if it isn't between a bicyclist and an equestrian user. It could be between a bicyclist and a hiker, or an equestrian user and a runner. Um, they're natural surface trails. They're fairly narrow in width. So in most instances, when two... Are go when two users are going in opposite directions, one must yield, and we hope that's done with the best of intentions. The nice part of the pump track is that the most concerning use of a shared trail is oftentimes the downhill section. 
And in this instance, the pump track will provide that dedicated downhill direction for the bicyclist and separate them from the other users on the main portion of Bluffview Trail. All that said is to mean that where there are now will be users that intersect or cross each other, that will be primarily on the uphill or flat portions of the trail, which makes it much safer. Yeah, I must admit, I'm most impressed by the addition of the 4,000, roughly 4,000 feet to get the cyclist off the Bluffview Trail proper, as it were, and create a little bit of separation just so we can avoid those sorts of things in the future. So thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. I guess we will have a roll call vote then. Commissioner Beatty? Yes. Commissioner Deppler? Yes. Commissioner Helfrey? Yes. Chair Gregnani? Y yes. Councilmember Werther? Aye. Mayor Bolin? Yes. Thank you again. Okay. We will thank you all for coming. And if you care to stick around, you're welcome to do so. <laughs> Mr. Newberry, PZ 1-20. Madam Chair, we're Oops. throwing you the proverbial curveball, uh -oh. so I will be reciting the advertisement for okay. you tonight. PZ 1-20, City of Wildwood Planning and Zoning Commission, care of the Department of Planning, 16860 Main Street, Wildwood, Missouri, 63040. A request for the review and recommendation by the Planning and Zoning Commission of various proposed amendments to the zoning regulations that are set forth in Title IV of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Wildwood, made in conformance with state statute, and to update various zoning regulations set forth therein. This applicable request is in all wards. Thank you. Mr. Newberry. Madam Chair and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, before you tonight is an information report with a recommendation prepared by the department uh, relating to the codification of the city's code of ordinances. A uh, public hearing was held on this matter at the commission's February 3rd, 2020 meeting. The codification uh, process is an important one and ensures that the code of ordinances remains clear, consistent, and incorporates any amendments, deletions, or changes to it that have been adopted by the city in the past several years. Similarly as, similarly, as part of this codification process, certain matters relating to federal and state law can be reviewed as well as relevant court actions. The process of codification began over a year ago. This process uh, involves the engagement of a codification company uh, as well as review by the Department of Administration, Public Works, the Department of Planning and Parks, and importantly, City Attorney Young. The overall review of the city's code of ordinances has identified certain needed changes to the section of the code entitled Title IV, or excuse me, yes, Title IV land use. And any change to the land use regulations of the City of Wildwood requires the review by the Planning and Zoning Commission, followed by a recommendation to City Council regarding those changes. This is the subject of the Department's information report before the commission tonight, which includes the items identified as recommended changes by the Department of Administration and the city attorney. In conclusion, the department has been involved in the codification process, has been given the opportunity to review it, and is supportive, supportive of these changes and is recommending favorable action by the commission tonight. Uh, with that, and with the chair's permission, if city attorney Young has anything to add. Mr. Young. Uh, the only thing I would add is just a reiteration of what was stated at the last meeting, which is that these were in t these changes are updates and clarifications, and they're not intended to be anything substantive. Uh, it's not a substantive change to the city's zoning ordinances. Thank you. I have a question um, relative to the comment from Mr. Hudson about uh, changing the format for the tree related ordinances is that possible to do my, my I believe that can be done without involving any action on this particular item 
because I think he made good points. And if there's no objection, if we could proceed with that, I know it adds more time and stuff, but it seemed to make sense. So. The tree manual is referenced in the Tree Preservation and Restoration Code. Um, as you can see from the list of codific codification changes, there are none referenced in this body of the report. We have started on that multiple times, and always it becomes a lower priority project, so my apologies to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And we can certainly, uh, with our addition of a new administrative assistant, put that at the top of the pile. Well, if there's no objection, if we could just keep it on the list somewhat prominently. That's, I know you have a lot to do, but yeah, pass that. So. And if you're not aware, the Planning and Zoning Commission is the Tree Advisory Board, which is required to maintain our Tree City USA designation. So any modifications or any changes that might come through the tree manual will come to the Planning and Zoning Commission for review and recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, since I missed the public hearing, I'll ask the question that probably was asked then. Um, right up front in Chapter 400 under Section 400.050B uh, uh, regarding uh, the decision to revise the read as follows, talks about any citizen member of the commission may be removed by a majority of the city council at any time, da, 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 and so forth. I'm assuming, and I hope this has been done, this has been synced up against the Planning and Zoning Commission bylaws. To make sure we're consistent across the two with the permission of the mr. Werther regarding the question I would ask mr. young to respond the language that's in the code is consistent with state statute which is consistent with the bylaws okay I just didn't get a chance to pull out the bylaws before thinking about it that's why I wanted to bring it up and I didn't know if well, it was asked in the public hearing and, and I don't believe we specifically address it in the bylaws because it's not something that the Planning and Zoning Commission has specific authority over uh, but it is consistent with state statute and mr. Werther I do want to note that in reviewing and preparing the information report with recommendation the department did review each of the components under Title IV, and more so than any anything in regards to this particular item, I believe it's intended to add clarification regarding such notice, uh, therefore making it easier if a situation were to arise to address it in a more consistent and appropriate manner. Appreciate that. Thank you. Excuse me, I guess I would have one request, and that is um, I found these a little bit arduous to get through in terms of some of the, uh, some of the changes and, and relating them back to the original version. Um, so because I'm going to need to spend a little, a lot more time on this <laughs> before the next meeting and um, before we do the final vote on this. <clears throat> so. If you have a specific suggestion that might make it easier to understand, yeah. the department would be glad to add that suggestion, so to speak, to each of them in preparation of the letter of recommendation. Yeah if the vote f moves forward tonight. Okay, well, I mean, normally when we get something like this, we get the old ver the current version with line outs and then 
insertion of the new text in 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 a different color type in red usually um, and I was wondering you know obviously the ones where no changes or nothing substantive is is being changed um, you know it's just a, you know no ch mostly no changes but if there are significant changes if we could get those done in that fashion it I, would help me I know that I'd be glad to try to do that for you all. okay thank you Mayor or Ye Council Member Werther. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vunich, I think uh, normally we would see this back in two weeks, correct? As a letter of recommendation? Um, yes, normally the information report, if acted upon by the Planning and Zoning Commission, returns at the next available meeting, which is typically two weeks. We already have a pretty full docket, so if it's acceptable, if tonight's vote is favorable, I may bring it back in four weeks just to give me more time to do the And I think that it would allow changes. Ms. Grignani as well as anybody else the opportunity to do the in-depth review as well. So I appreciate that. I would certainly be okay with it as well. I would agree. Thank you. Mr. Newberry, roll call vote. Mr. Commissioner Helfrey. Yes. Commissioner Beatty. Yes. Commissioner Deppler. Chair Gragnani? Yes. Councilmember Werther? Aye. Mayor Bolin? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that passes. Okay, our next item is the work program. Sorry, I got distracted there. <laughs> <laughs> An action of the Planning and Parks Committee regarding future items for the Planning and Zoning Commission's work program that were considered and acted upon by its members for inclusion of the, them for, for action in fiscal year 2020. All awards. Motion to approve. I have a question. Um, I just want to clarify this in my own mind. That is this work set program. This is just kind of an overview, right? It doesn't get into the individual things. Maybe I'm confused, but I, um, you know, it doesn't say anything on here about solar panels. And I thought that we were going to talk about solar panels. Am I getting too far down in the weeds? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When the Planning and Zoning Commission was presented the draft work program for 2020, at the end of 2019 there was a request to add solar panels as a subject of a future meeting or meetings which was accomplished just very briefly to coordinate between the major players in the city of Wildwood relative to land use and land use discussions and decisions the department took the work program to the Planning and Parks Committee which oversees the Department of Planning and Parks and offered to them what the commission members had prioritized, some items that were maybe less priority, but, certain I, but certainly items that had um, drawn questions or comments over the course of a year or two, and then um, anything that they would like to add, meeting the committee members. And so tonight, that's what's being presented to you, is the results of that discussion with the parks and Health Planning and Parks Committee of City Council. The department took the liberty to identify priorities as well, uh, meaning that some of the items that the Planning and Zoning Commission originally identified in 2019 were given high priorities, and certainly the department did not feel it was appropriate to change those. So tonight we're adding a few more things onto the work program. Hopefully you find them acceptable. Okay, thank you. Then I'll, I'll second the mayor's motion. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Seeing none, I do have one. Um, I guess I'm questioning the Planning and Zoning Commission addressing, at least primarily, additions to the architectural requirements. Is this, is this not something that should be the purview of the Architectural Review Board? In the past, the Architectural Review Board 
will start the process, create a recommendation for the Planning and Zoning Commission, but since the regulations are contained in the zoning ordinance, ultimately it is the responsibility of this body to make the recommendation to okay. City Council. Okay, I can understand that, but I just didn't think we should start the process. Typically you have not. Okay. You have a burning desire. We can certainly <laughs> run them on parallel courses. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, if there are no more questions, um, we Mr. Mr. Newberry, you want to take a vote on this? Yes. Commissioner Beatty? Yes. Commissioner Deppler? Yes. Commissioner Helfrey? Yes. Chair Gragnani? Yes. Councilmember Werther? Aye. Mayor Bolin? Yes. Okay, and I guess this will be the last item. The Recommendation report for the monument sign at New Community Church, PZ 26-91. A recommendation report for a new monument type sign for New Community Church, St. Louis County's PC 26-91 New Community Church, which is required given its current representation will be removed from its existing location by the City of Wildwood as part of its Phase 3 Manchester Road Streetscape project. Amended C8 Plan Commercial District, north side of Manchester Road, west of Taylor Road, roundabout. Street address 16801, Manchester Road, St. Louis County, locator number 24V630297, thereby supporting the proposed siting of it at the selected location along the property's primary frontage, Ward 8. Mr. Vunich. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, you may have noticed that our Director of Public Works has come forward to participate in this discussion. The reason being is, is that the Department of Public Works has been instrumental in the development of all three phases of the Manchester Road streetscape. This third phase has been directly under the purview of Rick Brown, our Director of Public Works. And so after the department provides its general report with recommendation, if there are specific questions regarding this matter, Mr. Brown is our expert here tonight. And we do appreciate his attendance. Thank you. Madam Chair and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, just to provide you a couple of items of background before we look at the images and discuss the sign and its location. This particular location, um, New Community Church, has a long history relative to zoning and use. Many of you may not recall at one time it was the dinner theater and held uh, actual live performances and you could have dinner there while the performances were underway. It was then Bubba Coy's restaurant, which served fish, fried fish, and other delicacies of a similar nature, but was ultimately purchased by the church and has been New Community Church since the incorporation of Wildwood. Those facts are important from the standpoint that, like most churches, this property is not zoned a residential zoning district designation. It is a commercial district designation, and that was accomplished by St. Louis County. The property is C8 Planned Commercial District, and as part of that commercial district ordinance, there are specific, excuse me, specific regulations relating to signage. One that is most important tonight is the requirement that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve the location of all signage associated with the property. The monument sign is the subject of the request and as you can see on the plot plan or site plan that's been provided for consideration, the sign is that little rectangle that's next to the heavy dark solid black line that is associated with the edge of the property and the edge of right-of-way. The sign that was at this location had to be removed to accommodate the widening of Manchester Road. Manchester Road will not grow in lane width 
so to speak, or number of lanes, in that it is being widened to accommodate on-street parking, bicycle facilities, and pedestrian areas. Those additions to this particular section of streetscape did require additional land area from adjoining property owners. That additional land area in the case of New Community Church is where the existing sign that identifies the property was located. This particular matter was presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission in September of 2019. A discussion ensued amongst the Planning and Zoning Commission members and the Department of Planning relative to the size of the sign, the location, how it would look relative to the streetscape and other considerations. To the benefit of the Planning and Zoning Commission, they were hesitant to proceed forward until more of the streetscape project had been implemented, principally the grading associated with it and the establishment of elevations relative to this property, the new streetscape, etc. As the project has proceeded, despite the winter months, the character of the streetscape itself is becoming more and more apparent each day. To assist the Planning and Zoning Commission in its analysis of the location, the Department of Planning requested that Gershenson Construction, the primary contractor for Phase 3 of the Manchester Road streetscape, provide a mock-up which was completed and installed this past Saturday. And as you can see, Mr. Newberry, with his trusty camera, went out and took photographs of the location today. The mock-up is the area in the pink or purple color, and Gershenson Construction was provided the plans that had been developed by the city in conjunction with New Community Church for this sign representation. Here, the sign is located on the left-hand side of the slide, and this is looking from west to east or toward the Taylor Road roundabout. I think key characteristics here is the grade associated with the proposed streetscape. As you can see, it's consistently level with the existing drive lane of westbound Manchester Road. Another key characteristic is the proximity of existing parking to that area of right-of-way. As you can see from the lines, parking, parking lot lines, the parking area abuts the sign and there is limited amount of separation. The next slide is taken on Manchester Road, on the south side of Manchester Road, looking to the northeast. It does give you a different perspective relative to the sign, its mass, and placement. This one, if Mr. Newberry can help. This one, again, is on the south side of Manchester Road, looking directly across it to the north. In the background is the church facility, the place of worship. And this is what the side of the sign will appear from on Manchester Road. From a different vantage point, this is now Mr. Newberry standing on the east end of the property, looking west on Manchester Road, and the sign here in blow up can be reflected there. So again, it's important to note that the grade associated with this area of the streetscape will remain relatively unchanged. The only alteration that we were not able to accomplish today due to wet weather conditions was to park some vehicles along the proposed parking lane to kind of give the perspective of what will be visible and what will not if parked cars 
are at that location. Again, I have to go to the other set of photos, my apology. Again, just another perspective. And you can see the temporary sign that's been installed for the purposes of identification and then the existing or the proposed mock-up. It's not showing as well. Yeah, and it's not, re I'm trying to enlarge it and it's not responding, so my apologies. Go back to the PowerPoint. Let's see if that will. Uh, it just appears to have frozen completely. So far, the record. Yeah. Technology is great when it works. works. <laughs> when it doesn't, it certainly can lead to some head scratching. My apologies, um, but as the mayor mentioned, you do have a general representation now of what the sign will look like. I know there are concerns on the part of the Planning and Zoning Commission members regarding its size. The site-specific ordinance, that C8 Plan Commercial District Ordinance, does limit the size to 30 square feet. The new community church did present a request to the Board of Adjustment. The Board of Adjustment did authorize 50 square feet for the sign. The rationale behind the, behind the action of the Board of Adjustment was that now in the city sign regulations, places of worship like New Community Church are allowed up to 50 square feet of sign size. The 30 square foot that was established by St. Louis County is again part of the site-specific ordinance, but our underlying regulations allow that additional 20 square feet. The department, as it did in September 2019, is recommending approval of the location. That location was worked on between the church, the city, via the Department of Public Works as part of the negotiation for the land dedication easements necessary to complete the streetscape project along this particular property's frontage. Therefore, given the location is at the discretion of the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Department's review of the location, it is recommending approval tonight. Thank you. Mayor Bowen. Uh, I just have a couple questions, Joe. Um, you just mentioned the size of the sign. Uh, can you can you just explain? Is it the case that even though the Board of Adjustment granted the variance for the additional, um, well, I'll just ask it this way: Given that the Board of Adjustment has granted that variance, is is that the size of the sign at this point within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission, or is that a ship sailed? That ship has sailed, sir. Okay, and then, as you know, the Board of Adjustment action is only appealable to the St. Louis County Circuit. There you Court. go. Okay. Uh, I'd forgotten. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, not that I was objecting to it, just wanted to get that procedurally resolved. And then secondly, um, the mock-up that we have, which by the way, thank you so much for doing that because there's nothing like seeing it in real life and real time three-dimensionally to make these kinds of decisions and it's going to be here for a long time. I can't express enough thanks for that. Um, but right there, that this this photo shows the mock-up sitting on the surface of, actually slightly above it appears, of, of grade. But my recollection is that once the streetscape is done, in fact, this sign will actually be lower, will it not? I mean, somewhat, because it's going to be, or will it be at par with the road? Am I, did I, am I recollecting that incorrectly? Or? Um, I'm going to show a different image, and then if Mr. Brown would like to uh, address that question relative to the grade. I think that'd be a great opportunity to hear from the engineer. But there 
is a base or pedestal the sign is intended to be mounted upon. Obviously, it has additional character and more aesthetic value, but I believe Mr. Brown can answer. Yeah, I'm not, actually, Mayor Bolton, I'm not sure I'm the best to answer that question. My understanding with the sign is that that base would be at grade, at finished grade. Well, um, what I'm getting at is, and I may not have asked it properly, so you have the street, and then my recollection is that there was, there was there's sort of a, a uh, descending, it descends as it goes away from the street, uh, and then certainly this is placed on top of the, the, of, of grade at this point. My, my whole point being that it, I'm not sure that the height of this sign is actually going to be what we're seeing here. It's in fact going to be, I suspect, potentially lower given the final grade and, and, and the way the, the street needs to go down because that parking lot is lower than the street. That's correct. There, there is a curb that would be constructed that would raise up the level of the sidewalk okay. about six inches in height from the street elevation so that's not represented in necessarily in the in the grading and the the work is not finished the construction is not finished at this point so you don't see that that grade difference that will be resulting from the curb once that's constructed if that makes sense let me say it this way is it more likely than not the case that the sign as we see mocked here will not be any higher and might potentially be lower than what we see here i would i would agree with that okay. statement yeah thank you Mr. Weather. I'll go ahead if there are any other questions. Make a recommendation to approve the uh, recommendation report as Second. presented. Is there any other questions from any of the commission members? Ms. Epler. Joe, I did have one question. So looking at that, the street parking, is it going to be on the street side of that particular sign? Or is it just going to be a sidewalk kind of situation? So based upon this particular drawing, the yellow area is actually the drive lane. That mm -hmm. gray area that has the line hatch is the proposed parallels parking spaces. Okay. And then next to that is the pedestrian facilities. I believe that little area that's just to the north of the dash line and abuts that solid black dark line is the tree lawn where the plantings are, are being proposed. Okay, thank you. And uh, the follow-up question is, so it seems like in the drawing that I saw here, based in a, opposition to what the pictures look like, that the height of the sign seems higher. I mean, it seems higher than it looked like on the rendering that we got in our packet. Is that is that more accurate or are the drawings more accurate? I believe the drawings are more accurate in that as Mr. Brown mentioned and I failed to, so thanks to him, is that we've got the general lay of the land but the finished grade is going to be different mm -hmm. in that as you can see it's relatively uneven as you move from the edge of the existing drive lanes to the north or toward the siltation fence and all told it's not going to drop significantly but there won't be that extension of there won't be that gap between the mm -hmm. bottom of the pedestal or monument and the grade and it'll all be flush Okay. My Thank impression you. is as the same as Mr. Brown's. I think what you see here is the worst case scenario in terms of height. And from that point forward, I think we'll see it um, not any taller and possibly slightly shorter. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any commission members? I do, I do have a question. Um, I understand, obviously, that the Board of Adjustment has ruled on this was in that it is what it is now in terms of size. However, I seem to recall that in previous conversation regarding this sign that 
we were given the impression that this was going to possibly potentially be lower than street level in terms of the placement of the sign and now it appears to be pretty much level with the street so the point of the department in its report in previous conversations is that if the sign were to be placed at the minimum setback of um, associated with this particular property it would be in the parking lot and would be below the crest or the top of grade associated with the property so for visibility purposes the sign was pulled forward to an area at a zero foot setback which is consistent with what the previous sign was um, was placed but again um, it was never intended to have the sign into the parking lot area and I, and I would ag I would agree with that I mean you don't want the sign in the in you know way down in the parking lot but I guess I'm a little concerned about the size um, I mean it's not it's not horrible but <laughs> it is pretty big <laughs> and it, and we're not on a high-speed road like you know uh, living word sign along highway 100 we're on a on a road that traffic is driving 35 miles an hour I think the major differentiation is again is just the visibility aspect not necessarily a show associated with speed of vehicles but the parking, parking of the vehicles in front of it so I think in part the height is driven by that as well as the size Mayor Bowen. so in follow-up to Commissioner Gregnani um it could be the sign could be placed below the grade of the road without going into the parking lot could it not there is one of these i believe and that was the point i was trying to make earlier is that i think what we're seeing here is is not likely at least i was hoping consistent with what to, to her point with what the end result will be it, it would because of the unless they're going to i guess they could build up the back but but it i'm not sure that's a great idea either but um, so in this particular instance as you can see the sign this is the back side of the sign or facing from the church toward the street the silt fence is between that and the parking lot area and there still is a bit of a green space before you actually reach the curb line of the parking lot so the intent would be to push that sign as far back as possible because again as it stands now it is part of the public right-of-way um, under the agreement with the um, city for the dedication of right-of-way so let me just say it this way if if Commissioner Gregnani's concern uh, to to alleviate that concern could it not be the case that as part of the approval by the Commission assuming she's okay with it and the rest of the Commission that the sign be approved but that the understanding be that it is placed with the natural topography of the land and not built up in other words made higher than than and in fact what it would look like tonight which I don't think is what it will end up being I, I mean I think that if if that understanding is made part of the the the, the motion which I would be okay with then I think it, it it seemed to me that it would likely end up being that way in any event but I guess that's where what where I'm headed with the question is that if, if the Commission approves of it that it be that it go with the land and not be elevated is that where you were headed, Commissioner Gregnani, Chair Gregnani? Well, I mean, looking on the site plan, I was seeing it that it's basically right next to the sidewalk. Is that not the case? Uh, it's actually, if Mr. Newberry can, let me find it here. But you're saying it can't be moved, basically. So, is it? Um, so, the southernmost edge of the proposed sign is at the edge of the pedestrian facilities so from the perspective of the department 
certainly the motion can be that there would be a minimum separation between the edge of the pedestrian facility, the sidewalk, and the sign. And how much would you, if I may, Ms. Chair, Madam Chairman, yes. how much would you recommend a separation of foot, two foot? I would say somewhere between 12 to 18 inches. That would ensure that if someone were on the outside edge of that particular sidewalk, they would not have to duck, so to speak, right. to avoid the sign. So if there's no objections, we've already made the motion, it's the property of the commission, but I would, I guess, just sort of move this along, see if there's consensus, and if there is, amend the motion to be that uh, it be 18 inches away from the sidewalk and that the height go with the natural topography and not be elevated to be at par with the road as it exists today. And I don't want to belabor it either, but I think I understand it now. Sign height is premised on the sign relative to street grade. So if a sign's placed at a grade below street, that additional area is free area calculated in the height. And the sign dimensions stay just like they are. Got it. So. No. So sorry. So I'm going to ask you, we need a, so you've made the amendment, Mayor. So we need a second on the amendment. Is that what I understand to happen? We could do it that way has to agree with it, right? Unless everyone agrees with it, we could just. Oh, we can just agree with it? Okay. So I would just ask if there's no objection, that'd be the motion. I have none. So here's a crude drawing, but if this is the street, that three feet difference in elevation between the street and the grade where the sign would be erected is free height, so to speak. And so it, I believe the mayor is saying is not to compensate for that, but to use the grade of the street and, it, and make it as short as possible to accommodate the installation. Ms. Deffler. Hey, Joe, I had one more question. So yes, looking at, again, at the drawings, um, when you look at the square footage of the sign and just the, the sign itself and not the pedestal, it's like eight by almost seven feet. So that's like 56 square feet. So is that larger than? Yes, the Board of Adjustment just granted 50 square feet. So that was the recommendation of the Department of Planning in that the current sign regulations allow 50 square feet. They should not be allowed a greater amount. And the department believed, as well as the Board of Adjustment by its action, that the 20 additional square feet was sufficient. Right, so, so, so they have to read it. So, so they, they I, yeah, they would have to shrink, shrink. the sign. Yes, the sign And hopefully is, by height. And that's the direction we'll give them. Okay. Thank you for that. There are no more questions, uh, and got everyone's in agreement with the placement of the sign. We'll have a roll call vote. Commissioner Deppler. Yes. Commissioner Helfrey. Yes. Commissioner Beatty. Yes. Chair Gragnani. Yes. Council Member Werther. Aye. Mayor Bolin. Yes. Madam Chair, before we conclude tonight, as you know, you're the strong six, so we do appreciate you being here, or we would have not had a meeting, so thank you. Uh, just before we adjourn, I just wanted to thank uh, Commissioner Gregnani for chairing tonight. Thank you. Okay, well, we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Ms. Helfrey. Mr. Beatty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much.